Hey everyone, we are finally back with a new chapter review for Versus. I am honestly sorry for being gone for so long, but remember to like the video and subscribe if you enjoy my content. So without further ado, let's get started. We start out where we left off last chapter, with these new humans asking our characters for help. Zabi and Pane are trying to deny reality because they can't believe the people they have summoned seem to be in the same situation they're in. After some injured soldiers arrive, we find out how their world merged with the magic one, which is that they built an interdimensional gate generator to connect them to another universe. Hollow is just kinda standing around, dumbfounded that the people that they called for help are now asking for their help. The new character introduces herself as Kayla, and her and Zabi start to hash things out to figure out what's going on. They realize that both of their universes called out for help at the same time, so they ended up merging together. Hollow asks about their enemies, and Kayla tells them that they are robots that humanity created with AI, and because of their hyperintelligence, they turned on humanity and have conquered 80% of their planet. Zabi and Kayla start to argue about whose natural enemy is stronger, but they get interrupted by a loud sound in the distance. The machines finally arrive, spouting off announcements to lure out any humans that are dumb enough to believe them, but they quickly notice everyone because of their heat signatures. The soldiers try fighting back, but none of their weapons work against them. They pull out an armor-piercing gun, but the machines already had armor to protect themselves from the shots it fires. Luckily, Zabi with his other mages are able to stun them with earth magic and then freeze them with ice magic, and it seems they were able to defeat them with it. Seeing how effective magic is on the robots, and how effective their guns are on the demons, Kayla asks Zabi to make an alliance for the benefit of both their worlds, and together they hope that they can defeat both their natural enemies. Halo again is watching from a distance, seeing how extraordinary his brother is even now seeing the light in this situation, paving a way for a better future, and he is supposed to be the hero. Compared to him, Hollow just feels like he's useless. While they are talking, Payne smells demons approaching. Zabi recognizes that they are not prepared enough to keep fighting more demons, so he orders a retreat to a fort he and his men are staying, and one of his men can fly them there with a spell but it'll take five minutes to cast. And now, on top of that, the robots are getting back up, and so they have to fend them off until the spell is completed. They do pretty well holding them off until a new robot arrives, being able to block their magic attacks from the mages. And on top of that, a demon captain named Kiva appears on a mission to kill Hollow, and easily defects laser blasts from the soldiers. He even flicks back, an armor-piercing round with even more force than it was fired with. He wonders who these new humans are, but he decides not to really think about it much, since it just means there's more to exterminate. Hollow starts to think if they are just destined to be destroyed at this point, since the people they summoned for help are in the same situation they're in now. One of the soldiers tries to ram into Kiva, and that does not go well. He then throws the vehicle at Freen to stop his casting, but Hollow seems to unlock a new stage to his sword's power and cuts through the truck like butter. He then announces that he's the one Kiva is looking for and charges him, but his sword seemingly runs out of power and Kiva goes in for the kill. Hollow decides if he's going to go out, he might as well be a distraction for all the enemies, so he throws his sword at the level 2 robot to get its attention. The robot turns his attention to him and sees a large amount of energy coming off of Kiva, and attacks him instead, designating him as the priority target. While they are fighting, Freen finishes the flying spell, but Kiva grabs onto Hollow, but again, the level 2 robot stops him. Kiva finally decides to go all out against the robot, and the robot activates all of its systems to attack him. And man, it looks pretty cool. The ship's unique design suggests that there were no Huh? Huh? Oh, come on! You gotta admit, this is cool! 
After this, Hollow passes out on his way back to the fortress and wakes up in a bed. Zebi greets him and tells him that they are at the Fort of Humanity. Hollow apologizes because so many people got hurt because of his weakness, but Zebi reassures him it's alright that they have a few more problems besides the other world fusing with theirs now. He brings him outside and shows him that multiple worlds were brought together, so they have refugees from all different kinds of worlds coming to the Fort of Humanity. And that's where the chapter ends. So let's get on to discussing the different points of the chapter. So the world where Kayla came from seems to be a science fiction futuristic world where they have developed laser weaponry to the point where all of the soldiers have them. Another question I have for their world is how long have the robots been around because with rogue AI stories they tend not to last more than a century because the AI is too powerful and wipes out humanity. Or, humanity takes it down before it can snowball into being unstoppable. Now talking about the robots themselves, we see levels to them in this chapter, with the level 1 robots seemingly being more like ground drones used for scouting and taking out small threats. They seem to have weak weaponry, only having close combat tools to kill their targets, but decent defense since the soldiers could not even take one of them down and they don't stay down for long since they did recover from the magic that was used on them. Now the level 2 robot was much more intimidating because it seems right before the level 1's turned off, they notified it and it came ready to defend against magic attacks with the force field projection. We also got to see what its full capabilities were against Kiva, and I could only imagine that the humans in this world would be lucky if they could take down just this level 2 robot. And it kind of terrifies me because we know there are going to be at least a few more robots that are above this one. Now on the demon side of things, we get to see a few more kinds of low tier demons. A lot of them are sea based, which makes sense since we're still in Jachi's realm. They basically stood no chance against the machine world humans being taken out pretty easily and even the larger demons can be taken out by their heavy vehicles. We also get to see a new rank of demon, which is a demon captain named Kiva, and once he arrived, he was just dominating on the battlefield. It's also good to know that Jachi still seems to see Hollow as some kind of a threat, even if it's a small one, where he sends a squad of demons to confirm he was dead. Kiva was really putting his all into the mission he was given, not really getting distracted much, and the only reason he failed was because the level 2 robot seeing him as a more of a threat constantly stopping him from killing Hollow. I don't see him getting killed by the robots in the area, but they are a decent threat to him since he had to release his true strength to fight them. But that's it for the demon side of this chapter, and I look forward to seeing Kiva again. Now on the side of humanity, things just got a lot worse. Now on top of the demon threat, they now have to deal with the threats of similar levels to them from different realities. On the bright side of things, they now have other humanities to help them, but like I said, that kind of gets cancelled out since they brought with them other major threats. And on top of that, they will have to deal with all the refugees and normal civilians coming to them for help as well. It seems that the humans from other worlds may be able to counter the other world's natural enemies, but once a mid-tier threat shows up, that advantage goes out the window. We will see how things go in the next few chapters, but right now, things do not look good for all the other humanities. This chapter was really good introducing us to the main premise of the series, with all these worlds being forced together because of their need for help against a dominating force in their worlds. It's, uh, very interesting. So thanks for watching the video, and hopefully I can get another video on this series out faster next time. I will see you guys.